President Buhari vows to appoint only those he knows as ministers. Interesting. And also the Ogun State Police Commissioner has stated that former Governor Amosun did not account for the ammunition he surrendered recently. Now this is Plus Politics and I am Mary Annako. President Muhammad Buhari has stated that he will not appoint as ministers individuals that he does not know, while suggestively saying that the set of ministers he had during his first term were imposed on him. He added that only tested and capable individuals who can deliver on their mandates would make his ministerial list. I'm wondering, is this the right Oh, is it right for any president of a nation to say this? Well, joining me to analyze this, I am being joined by Obi Ajewa. She's a legal practitioner. And of course, Shegun Shopita, he's a legal, uh, he's a political analyst and he's of the ACT Network. Thank you very much for joining us, Pleasure ladies and gentlemen. Here. So I'll start with you, uh, Shegun, because you are of ACT Network. You are part of civil society. And like I always say, civil society is supposed to, in conjunction with the people, pivot whatever leadership, or point them in the right direction. Now, the president is coming out to say he's been under unprecedented pressure to release the ministerial list and names of people who would be in his cabinet. But he also added that uh, this time around, he wants only people he has a relationship with. And I'm trying to understand if you have an idea what he meant by that statement. <laughs> I'm as confused as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... Um, but what would make a president insist on a personal relationship? It's a job. It's, Should you have that? It's, it's actually very simple if you think about it. Um, if you understand, as I am beginning to, the, the person of President Mohamed Buhari, then you will understand that he's only speaking to character. Um, he's a person that doesn't trust easily. Um, he's a person that is very, uh, uh, how would I say, uh, stubborn, resolute in his ideas, doesn't change his mind easily, right? And we have evidence of that in the fact that four years in office and he did not change his cabinet once, right? Um, so I, I think we, we've got a case on our hands where he's thinking to himself, hmm, my last cabinet didn't perform as much as I would have wanted them to. So this time, I'm going to appoint people I know and I trust. Now, somebody needs to send him a memo that he's going to appoint 36. The Constitution requires that he appoint 36. He maybe knows 1,000 plus. Well. <laughs> and <laughs> one, he has a special one, relationship with them. Yeah, so maybe. I, I don't know that you can. I mean, how, how can you do that? How can you um, bear in mind that you must appoint people that are competent and bearing in mind that you must appoint people that that are fit for the job how do you want to appoint 36 people i mean i don't know he, he's 76 so he's been around for a long time but to appoint 36 people that are competent and fit for the job amongst his own personal contacts is almost impossible yeah, well, so, so I, I really think you answered the question. He's yeah. been around for a while, so yeah. maybe he doesn't I mean, have I don't know those how, people. I don't know how he's going to do it. So he, somebody needs to explain to him that uh, um, you don't appoint, you, you, you seek for competent people, ask consult, ask for opinion of people around the country. Mm. Make sure there's a spread, make sure they're all competent, and, and employ them. You don't have to know them. Why does he have to know them? Uh, I mean... <laughs> I mean, you are aware of the Constitution and what it says about a lot of things, especially federal character. And um, one would wonder, there have been many people who have um, somewhat criticized or queried this presidency as to nepotism, favoritism, and not necessarily taking into co cognizance professionalism and actually meritocracy. And now the president says this. Is this going on to buttress the fact or the people's, you know, query and people's disapproval of certain things that he's done over time? We can't crucify him yet. Let him come out with his list. When he comes out with the list, the, pe the right people will know what to do. 
But if it comes up with a risk that reads like a security elite, I don't think it will go down well with Nigerians. Well, you know, the very first, um, the very first appointment that the president made under this administration, mm. the next level administration, was the NNPC boss. Mm. And that's also raised eyebrows, being that you took out one Northerner and you have another Northerner there. Are there no other people who can head that office? According to his own dictionary, and putting what he told the Bureau of Furniture when he went to Furniture, when they were asking him, why didn't you um, put one of our children? He said there was no body qualified to fit the position of one of the service chiefs or whatever, or head of a parastatal. So that is, in his own thinking, the only people that are qualified are Nautana and the Fulanis. But we, we can't also lean on that. I mean, mm. Ibogate Ibas is from Akwaibom, I think. He's mm. an Akwaibomite. Uh, mm. That's the naval chief. Yes, mm. I think he's from Akwaibom. Uh, so we really can't say that to all the people. No, what I am buttressing is that he gives us the impression that the only people... You see, he's working on a stand, um, standpoint of trust, people he can trust. But the question is, these people he has trusted, have they delivered? But does that not also put us in a bad light? And I'm not in any way taking sides with the president or holding brief for him. I might just be playing the devil's advocate here. Mm. If the president has not necessarily appointed people from the south-south, the south-east, there have been a few from the southwest. Mm. Could that also be that we don't have people that are trusted? We're not trustworthy in those regions. Could it be that our people are unable to deliver if they're given such opportunities? No, I think it was, it's the onslaught from the last election. I think it's, and remember, he's a man that said, if you give me 95%, I'll give you 95%. So I think it is, um, you know, carrot and stick theory. If you, the dangle carrot, and if you work, if you get it, if, you, if, you're, if you're a good boy, you get carrot. If you're a bad boy, you get stick. I think that's what's working out here. Let's rewind to 2015. I remember very well, I was on radio and I was analyzing why it took six months for the president to an, appoint um, his first cabinet. Now, I'll, I'll, make, I'll refer to that story because I remember Garba Shehu at the time uh, had said something, and I want to quote it. He, he said the presidency blamed the administration of former Goodluck Jonathan, President Goodluck Jonathan, for the delay in appointing ministers and other members of the cabinet. Now, Mr. Garba Shehu made this allegation in an interview on Channel's television. I remember that year. He said it took him time, and I quote, this is Mr. Garbashe, I'm quoting, it took him time to form a cabinet because the outgoing administration in 2015 did not cooperate with the transition committee, Shehu added. The president was given handover notes 48 hours to the handover of power, and for whatever reason, the president at the time had determined that. So here we are. May is gone. June is gone. We're in July. And we're wondering, you hand it over to yourself. What is the delay? And now he's saying that there's been too much pressure on him. They should give him time. While you're planning to hand over to yourself, should there not be a contingency plan before now? Should we even be having this conversation in the first instance? I mean, very clearly, um, for the exact reasons that you've given, he should have, I mean, he really should have hit the ground running. Um, even though we must also put this in context of our environment, um, the kind of politics that we play, the need for balancing consultation, which is why I'm a bit at a loss as to him saying he will only appoint people he knows, because the truth of the matter is that he won't. Um, <laughs> the party won't allow that to happen. He won't or, or he interest, can't? He can't. I mean, that's the reality. Who's going to stop him? No, he can't. I mean, because he's, he didn't elect himself. He didn't go there as an independent candidate, you know. So he's saying those things as that's his desire. Like she said, I mean, we, we wait until he's appointed, right? So, but the point is, from the date that you won the elections, which was um, February, I think February 20, 21st or thereabouts, till now, it's almost three months or four months. So why, why should it take 
you are not um, an opposition party. Once you've won that election, you there is no handover of anything. You are the one in it's office. It's just you. You're still there. It's just there. you. So I would have expected that from that moment, they were already searching, consulting, doing all the talking and whatever that needed to be done to find the adequate hands. And um, it's unfortunate that we're still here. I think it's just because President Buhari doesn't care. Um, he's going to do exactly what he wants to do. And At his own time. It's and that's why I asked is, you if, yeah. I mean, who's going to <laughs> stop him if we have seen a president um, of sorts? Who's going well, to stop there, him? Well, there's very little we can do because as lawyers, legal practitioners will say, there's no law compelling him, which is one of the things I think we should have. I mean, if, if we can't behave normally by, um, you know, compel ourselves through culture and good behavior, then perhaps we need to legislate some of these things so that we don't keep the whole country hanging in limbo, the economy <laughs> is hanging in limbo. Yeah, I, I was I about to, you just yeah. took the water out of my mouth, but Obi seems to be, she, I mean, she should shrug. But we have so many laws in this country. Yeah, and it, that yeah, it literally icks me out when we I keep know. saying, oh, we need to legislate know, but, but on this not, and legislate. What have the laws that we have done so far in holding anybody <laughs> accountable in, in the position of governance? You know, I'm sorry. I mean, it's one thing to have a, a compelling reason to do something and fail to enforce it. Because one day somebody might. It's another thing to leave things to the whims and caprices of people who apparently don't mean well and don't care. So, you know, I mean, I don't Your really care. Your president should mean well for that, the I mean, I, I hope he does. I really hope he does, you know. Um, and for me, I really don't care where the person is from. I don't care. I really don't care. Whether he's a northerner, he's a southerner, he can go and import group from mass for all I care. You know, some of the ministers in the last cabinet did very well. I mean, I yes, like, absolutely, like, like Amechi, you know, let's, let's be honest, yes, because, <laughs> no, I, I'll tell you why. He's the Minister of Transportation, right? I can, I mean, I can, uh, uh, maybe I well, should. Well, we have a I rail should, system maybe, that exactly, works, right? Exactly, you know, we, we've got the, so maybe the Lagos Ibadan, shirt, yeah. the Lagos Ibadan rail is going to start in October. Who started, and it's going to be who moving. Start, who started, who started, who started, who started. No, 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 it, you know, some of them did fairly well. I don't care whether it was an Amechi who is from the South-South, whether it was a Fashola who is from the Southwest, or whether it was somebody like Dalong who was a catastrophic well, but the, the, mistake. But the job is for the whole the federation. North. It's not necessarily serving. You're not a governor. You're not yeah. a minister for a certain state. Yeah. You're there to work yeah, for the federation. for the country. So we're still on the issue of Mr. President saying personal relationship. Mm -hmm. Let's go back again. I like to play, press rewind. Uh, same 2016 when he was um, asked, the Nigerians probed further. Why is he taking so long? He said he wanted men and women that had no questionable character. <laughs> men yeah. and women who were visionary. <laughs> and a lot of Nigerians, I mean, there were so many memes. Nigerians were making fun that he was looking for angels and he was going to import angels to come and do the job. But just putting side by side these people that Mr. President put in office, in quotes, of unquestionable character, side by side with what they have done in four years, can we really say was worth the wait? Abi? I, I find it very funny when Mr. Shegun said that Amechi did a good job. I guess it's his opinion. He did fairly well. And it's he did opinion. very well. He did fairly well. And it's very well. Yeah. Okay. I'll take, I'll take it like that. Uh, in context. But one thing I've noticed about the Mr. President is that he's, um, he takes his time. Reminds me of um, the Baba Goslo we had in Lagos State, but that one did a good job. <laughs> but for him, I don't know. The, the, the time it took to appoint the ministers and to give us the ministers that we had like before, people we've heard before. I was expecting he would get untested hands, people that have good, uh, uh, good CVs, people, you know, all these young horns, green horns that are ready to make a name, that are ready to make a change. And I was really, really disappointed. Yeah, but what if 
Putting it in context, what mm -hmm. if the Greenhorns, he wasn't sure of, you know, them, he didn't have a personal relationship, he couldn't vouch for them, hence the reason why he didn't get them to work. Because must again, you, must you let's give the president the benefit of the doubt. If, what if these people have skeletons in their cupboard and he's a president for zero tolerance uh, when it comes to corruption? And these people that were his ministers don't, are very clean. Well... We're, no. we're still waiting for evidence to, that can hold them in court. No, it was, just a, just it, was, it was just a question I asked. Okay. It was just a question I asked. I did not make any allegation. I did not make... I cannot avert to what I cannot prove. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, he is saying that because he wants people that he knows. And let's look at it from his point of view. Every person would like to work with people that can carry and share their vision. So that's what he's saying. So let us give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, I keep telling people that private, private, private sector, which is the engine of this nation, has always been run independent of government policies. It's only a few government policies that really makes a lot of difference to private sector. So let's give him the benefit of that and pray that he comes out with people that he knows that would do a good job. Let's talk about the party, the ruling mm. party, the APC. They seem to want to have their hands everywhere, including the National Assembly um, leadership, mm. you know. Uh, so what makes us think that they will not be interested in these people picking? Because like you said, I want to pick on what you said, that the president will do what he wants to do at the end of the day. But then there is the party leadership on the one hand, even though there are so many cracks in the party, but there will be interest. Sometime last year, if not 2017, the president's wife said that certain people were taking over the cabal, were not allowing her husband to do his job. And then there were cases of hyenas and jackals. And Could that also be the reason why the president is making this statement? And how does he also take out the hand of Issa in this case? I mean, it, um, the, the party should be interested in the people that he puts there because he's, he ran on their platform. And whatever, remember, even though he is on his final term, the party would want to retain power even after President Buhari is out. Mm -hmm. So they should be interested. But the point is, whatever their interest is, one, should be done on time, and two, should consider um, factors, the basis of selection of people that they will recommend to the president should be merit. You know, I think that's the problem. We simply don't run a meritocracy in this country, and we have not done that for a long time. It's and got so to change. why do we expect that that's going to be the case? Maybe it will. Maybe when he comes out, like she said, you know, benefit of the doubt, maybe these 36 people he knows personally will be fantastic guys for the job. At that point, I will raise my hand and I will say, well done, Mr. President, <laughs> even if they are his personal friends. I mm -hmm. don't care. If they are competent people, if you've got a minister of transport, a minister of petroleum who's vast and versed in his job, if you, you know, all of them fit neatly into their, into their holes, you know, who cares? Who cares whether you know them or not? So really, it shouldn't matter to us. Give us competent hands that will move this country forward for, for a change. And we would all praise him. Do we see it? Returning ministers and DGs, you know, being that there's been uh, a return of <laughs> one or two of them. That was, I mean, the president, the president re re recently reappointed a few of them, yeah. especially the, I think the NHIS boss or yes. something. Yeah, the, boss uh, Mustafa. And the, uh, Can the I say S something? SGF. I would SGF, really, yes. I would need a, an injection of Valium if Mr. President makes much change in his new cabinet. Wow. I would need somebody who has to give me video. Probably you'll just eat crow on the show. Yes. We'll cook crow for you and you'll eat crow, maybe. Because he, he doesn't change. He's had the same security men, Burutai and all of them. He's had them for, f this is the Well, look floor. on the bright oh, yes. side, we changed the IGP. Because that one was oh, retiring no, no, no. and, there, was, and there must have been a conjecture reason for him to change him. But this president that I see, except if I'm, if I'm a bad reader of people, I don't see much change. A lot of those old people will come into this cabinet, except if they say, we don't want. Mm -hmm. 
that's when they will not be on the cabinet. Finally, uh, gentlemen, one statement each. Where do we fall in all of this? Because we're the ones who are going to be led. We're the ones who are going to be directly or indirectly, one way or the other, affected by the policies, the programs of these ministers and their ministries, their departments and their agencies. Where do we come in here to make sure that the president makes the right choice and not the same mistake over and over again? Um, there's very little we can do in terms of um, compelling him. Very little. I mean, it's his choice. He's the president. He's got the power to do this. We can only um, um, encourage, we can only um, appeal that he does the right thing. But I also think that regardless of what he chooses to do at the end of the day, even if he employs incompetent people, we now then have a job. It, it, what, what that would do is it will make our job harder. We now then would have a job to keep them on their toes, to be at their tail and at their necks, you know, you know, biting and pecking off, asking them to do what we want them to do because they are there to serve us. Okay. So, you know, that's, that's what I think. I think we have a lot to do. Whether he brings incompetence personified on that place, we have a way of communicating a dislike and what we don't want. I would say Nigerians should continue using that medium to get across to them and at the same time get to know the members of the House of Reps. Even most, some governors now have Twitter line, Twitter handles. Send Twitter to them, tell them we are not happy and keep sending them. Once they see, if you send them like hundred, a thousand messages on one thing, they will sit up and know that let's look into this thing. Because they're they are thinking, even if Mr. President is leaving, the thing is they will want an, the next president to come from their party. So they have to, they, they, now we've realized that we've gotten a way to talk to them, to get across to them. So I would, I would, I would, I would enjoy people to use that medium and get across to them. All right. Yeah. Well, interesting. Uh, Obi Adjabo is a legal practitioner. Shagun Shopitan is a political analyst and he's of ACT Network. We'll take a short break. They're not going anywhere. When we come back, we'll be speaking on the <laughs> special discovery in uh, Ogun State um, State House. Of course, the arsenal that was discovered and surrendered by the former governor himself, Stachin. We'll be right back.